Hi everyone, this is Tina with Rehatch Designs and today um, what I thought I would do is um, just do a little craft with me. I, a lot of times when I'm doing um, journals and different projects and things, I use uh, lace and I use different ki colors of lace and I have in the past bought colored lace um, and a lot of times I just get really disappointed because, you know, I order it online and I get it and then it's not the color that I want. And because of that, um, I've gotten to the point where I started, um, dyeing my own lace. And once I started doing it, it's just really super easy to do. And I needed to do some for a project that I'm doing. And I thought, well, I'll just turn on the camera and we'll just do a little craft with me. And if you guys want to see how I do it, then we can we can do that. And I do it a few different ways, but I, I thought I'd just kind of go through my process. And it's super, super easy. So um, not, not hard to do. And once you figure out how to do it, you'll probably do the same thing. I buy my lace now all white. I don't even buy the off-white, which I use a lot of, because sometimes the color is just not what I want. It's either too dark or too light or too yellow or whatever. And I found that if I buy white, even the synthetic white, I can dye it pretty easily and get it to the color that I want. And um, it just, I don't know, I like it better that way. And also, um, I have found some of the colors that, I had bought that I didn't like I could kind of change up a little bit too and get them to where I liked them so anyway um, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of show you I had bought um, some wedding invitations I think it was last year at Hobby Lobby and the really neat thing about it is is that I bought like four boxes and actually my niece was gonna use them for her wedding and then it turned out that they decided to elope. And anyway, um, they each invitation came with a piece of lace so that you could, um, you know, it, it wrapped around the invitation. And honestly, they were $1.99 a box. And just, and I mainly, I got them for the envelopes and the um, paper inside, which were really good quality that I've used on different projects. But, it also came with all this lace and I really like this lace. It's kind of a stretchy lace, but I just like, you know, it's really pretty. And since I have a lot of it, I was going to go ahead and maybe change the colors on it a little bit. And I'm going to, you know, show you how I do that. And I have some other kind of lace too. Now this is a synthetic lace. It's not a cotton lace. And those um, are a little harder to dye than a cotton. A cotton takes the color um, a lot easier, but I actually don't have a lot of problems the way that I do it. Now, the way that I dye my lace is I use alcohol ink and I make my own alcohol ink, which is another video that I'll do. But all of this ink I have I have abbreviated it, but I know what it means. Um, here's my blue. Here's my purple. Believe it or not, this is my pink. <laughs> and here's some yellow. And I have a few other colors in there too. And this is just a solution that I use all the time. I actually probably need to put it in a bigger bottle. Um, this is a solution of alcohol ink that I use um, regular alcohol ink and I mix it with alcohol and I use this all the time as just a kind of quick uh, vintaging things up. These alcohol inks are made with um, uh, permanent markers and alcohol. I mean that's how I made this these colors so um, and they work really well super easy to make and I use them all the time um, you know, of course you can buy different colors of alcohol ink and use that too, but, um, 
anyway, I use it diluted. This is, you know, um, alcohol in here and all of these. And at first when I used to make these, I used to use the, uh, like 90% alcohol or 70%. And I don't do that anymore. I've used the uh, dollar store. I don't know what kind this is. Just the 50% alcohol that they say not to use for um, uh, disinfecting. Anyway, I use this to make these and it works, I mean, it works fine. I, I haven't found the difference. So um, I would imagine it just has more water in it, but it works fine to make them for that purpose anyway. Anyway, I'm going to show you how I do that with this. Um, the other thing that I use when I make them is I have a spray bottle. This, bo this spray bottle gets very used by me. Um, and it just has the same alcohol in it. Um, just the same alcohol. Just straight. doesn't have any water mixed in it. And the reason this bottle is so used, I use this to clean off my mat. I clean off my surface. It's super cheap. It's only a dollar a bottle. And um, it works great. It works better than just uh, plain water. And it really does a great job of getting glue off and getting, um, you know, paint and ink off your hands and things like that. Um, it won't get uh, permanent ink like on my mat that I've had spots uh, from my uh, permanent ink pads. It won't get that off, but it will get um, the non-permanent type of ink off. It will get the permanent ink off of, you know, the glass mat or whatever. So in any case, um, let me um, show you how I do this. And first I just take whatever I'm going to um, dye my, you know, my lace that I'm going to dye and this is a synthetic lace and first I do is I take my alcohol and I spray my piece to get it all wet just kind of wipe it up and scrunch it around now if you want to use gloves for this you can because you are going to get this ink on your hands I don't worry about it too much because I keep my alcohol here and then I just spray my hands from time to time and I have a rag and I wipe them off and then I, you know, I don't worry about it. Okay, so now that I've got this moist and wet, and the reason you want to do that is it, it makes the color um, more fluid all the way across. And it doesn't have as many spots because it's not being soaked up in dry spots. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to use is this is my um, alcohol ink that I make with just taking, let me see if I can find those over here real quick. I will take um, just some different alcohol inks and mix up, a, you know, however many drops, it may be, you know, 20 drops in here of each kind to get the color I want. And then I put alcohol in it, and I actually make that with alcohol ink that I buy. Now, I probably could make my own, but I, I use this stuff so much that it's, it's well, well worth it for me. But anyway, this is how I make my white beige. I just take some of that, and I spray it on here all the way across. Okay, and then I take it and wipe it up a little, and then I squish it around in my hands. And this part of it's important because what it does is it moves the color all the way around and that's why you wanted it kind of moist before you started. And what you'll find out when you're done is look, look what it did. So you have a perfect, you know, um, piece that's kind of now off white. Let me show you what the other piece would it look like before. So you can see what that did and it's, it's done. I mean, just let it dry. Um, you can use your heat gun or whatever. Just be careful because on this synthetic, what it will do is um, it'll melt it. So I just set that out to dry for a little bit, and in a little bit that'll be that'll be ready to go. Let me wipe off my thing here. So that's how I make my beige. Um, I'm gonna wipe my hands real quick. Uh, 
when I do that, I also do colors. So here's one, it's the same white, and I'm gonna do the same process, and I'm gonna put this all on here. It doesn't have to be soaking, but I just, you know, take it and wipe it up on here, mix it up on my hands, all right? So then I'll take that and um, also wipe off your hands in between because otherwise that color will get on it. Um, if I'm going to distress this later, I don't worry about that too much. But in any case, here is the pink and it is very, if I can get it out, it's not coming out. Hold on. I've got another one right here. Let's see if this one's going to spray better. It's a very bright pink, which is, you'll see what I do with that. So I take that and I squish it all the way around. Okay, so that's way brighter than I want it, okay? But I can fix that because what I'm going to do it is pink, but it's it's a little brighter than I want it, okay? So I think what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take a little bit of my purple. I'm going to make it more of a burgundy color. And that just really made it more, more pink. Okay. So now that I've got this super bright kind of neon pink, and that's not really the color I want, but we're going to get there. I'm going to take my dark color and I'm going to spray that on there. And scoop it all up and then I'm going to move it around. And what that did is that toned it down a tremendous amount. Um, I think I'm going to probably do more. Because this is actually a pretty light uh, brown. I, I don't have a lot of the alcohol ink in it because I mainly use it to make things a very light beige. So now what you'll see happening is this is toning it down quite a bit. So that color got tremendously toned down by, just by doing that. And I can keep doing it, you know. Um, let's see. I don't know. I haven't used this distress ink for a while. Let me see what color that is. This is a little bit more purple. I don't know if I want to use that. Yeah, that has a little purple in it. I don't want to do that. don't think it's going to help our cause. So I'm going to do this one more time. And do that. Put that in there and what that does is it completely changed the color so let me wipe off my hands a little bit so this made it kind of a more of a muted pinkish peach color which now I like and when it dries I'm sure I'm gonna like it a lot but again this is what we started out with and then this is what we ended up with so you can see you've got a lot of room um, to make just about any color you want. So again, we'll let that dry. So let's say we want to do, I don't know, let's try maybe some blue. I'm going to wipe off my hands because they still have a little pink on there. All right, so we're going to take this, smush it around a little bit, get it all nice and evenly coated. And let's just say we want to do blue. Take that. Hopefully this will spray. And you see those splotches on there. It's not on there evenly. Just kind of squish that around, go like that. And now we have blue. So if you like that color blue, you can leave it the way it is or you can add your 
your vintage stuff to it. Um, just make sure you roll it around in the palm of your hand because that's what moves the color um, throughout the whole thing. So there you go. Here's some blue. I kind of like that color just the way it is. So I'm going to leave that just like that. Okay, so we've done our blue. Um, let's just say, get this off my hands and off of here. Um, what other colors do we want to do here? Let's just say we want to do purple. And we want to get a certain color of purple. We'll do that. And I always find purple is kind of my hardest color for me to get right for some reason. I don't know why. But it always seems to be more pink than purple. Let's see if I can get this with this color purple and see what happens. My purples are all a little different. Depending upon the marker you use to make it, that's going to... Yeah, see this looks more pink to me, which is okay. It's kind of a bright pink more than a purple, I think. And I can live with that. I think what I'm going to do with that is I am going to take a little bit of blue and put it on there and see if I can make it a little bit more bluish purple. So what you're technically doing is you are actually taking colors and mixing them right as your yeah see that made it way more purple purple okay oh, let's see so check that out guys we took those colors and we mixed it and it made a more of a lavender purple which is what I was trying to get at and it's nice and saturated and so we mix those colors right on the right on this you saw it was hot pink we added a little bit of blue to it and it made it um, purple so just like you would mix colors you know any other way that's what you can do so that made it a nice lavender and so we have that color now um, let's see here let's try um, let's try maybe a yellow or no, you know what? I think I want to do another beige. No, you know what? I think I'm going to do it a yellow. We'll do a yellow. See how that works. And like I said, you have to make sure your hands are clean every time because when you, you know, smush stuff around and whatever color you were using last that's going to work. Let's just try the yellow. No idea why some of these are working and some are not. Well, I don't know. Can't figure that out. The pump sprayer on this is not working. There we go. Let's see. Let's see here. Nope, still not working. Oh well, I'm going to sprinkle this on here and then just kind of mix it in there and see how that works which you can do move that around Woo, that's a bright yellow yeah i don't think that's going to work that is look how bright that is guys way bright so i think what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to go ahead and add another color to it now let's see what we're going to do. I could... I could distress it. Let's see what happens with that. And see if that will get it to where I want it. And tone it down a ton. 
right? And don't always forget you want to wipe everything up with it because then you're not wasting what's on there. Yep, see that toned down the yellow tremendously. So that gets it to probably the yellow that I want. More of a mustard kind of yellow, if you see that. So that's actually perfect. I think I like it just like that. Um, let me just kind of mix it up a little. I see a few spots that are uneven. And that's what that does, is that just makes it more even. So there you go. So that's how I did that one. I'm going to let it dry. Okay, so now I've got quite a few colors of that lace. And let me kind of show you with some other things what you can do. Wipe off my hand a little. I get these cotton um, rags at uh, the dollar store and I love these. They come in a two pack and I use them all the time in the craft room and then I um, you know just throw them in the wash you know separate from everything else because you've got all these different colors and you don't want them getting on your clothes or other things. But I love that. Okay, now so here is some lace that I bought. And it's a nice color and everything. But, I mean, it's okay. It's alright. But it's a little too bright. And I think what I want to do, what you can do with this also, is you can take some of this. I'm just going to take a wad of it. Because I, I think some of it, I'll use this. But I'm not, I probably won't use the colors a little bit too bright. A little too new looking for my vintage stuff. So this is a synthetic, it's not cotton, it's kind of a peachy color, but I kind of want it a little bit more, um, a little bit more muted, uh, a little bit more uh, vintage. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to get it nice and wet with my alcohol, wipe that all up, get it all in my hands. This is important to get it spread when you have a big bunch like this, um, because Got to get it nice and wet, okay? So now we're going to take our our uh, alcohol ink that's in the, the brown colors. And I'm trying to think what colors these are that I used. They are um, latte. Yeah, these are both latte. I mainly use the latte and there's another one called ginger. And because latte obviously has a coffee color to it, and I tend to use that a lot. Um, I don't just use it on lace. I use it on um, if I want to quickly um, vintage a piece of paper or something. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to do all the rolling around in my hands. Okay. And since this is a big bunch, and you can do bunches. I mean, I wouldn't do one much bigger than this, but you definitely can do that. So if you get some lace and you're not crazy about the color, um, you know, this works great. Now, obviously, if you start with white, you're, you know, you're, you're working, you know, um, with basically a blank slate, which that's why I've gotten to where now all I do is I order just white. I don't even, I don't even order the off-white anymore on the synthetic laces because a lot of the off-white colors I didn't like. Okay, so I want you to check this out. Let me wipe off my hands so that I don't get it on the other lace. And I want you to see the difference in the two. And it's, it may seem subtle, but one is just a lot brighter. And this one is now um, a lot more tinted, a little bit more, um, I don't know how to explain it, um, just a little bit more uh vintage and look I think as far as the color and it probably would go better with a lot of the things that I would use so there you go um, you can change that color now let's say it's kind of peach so let's say I wanted to take some of this well, let's just say a chunk like this let's just say I wanted to take some of this and I wanted to go ahead and make that a little bit more pink not so much peach and I could spray a little pink on there 
and I can go like that, move it in. Now remember this started out peach, so now get this. So now this one, this one has turned out a little bit more pink, okay? Actually, I think we could do a tiny bit more. Not too much. Maybe put a little bit more alcohol on there because the alcohol dries quickly. So these that's another thing. These things will dry, they will dry really quick. And you want to make sure that you're doing a good job, you know, um, smushing it around in your hands because that's what mixes it. So now we took our peach that we had here and we turned it into pink. So if you can see the two difference right there. So we have completely two different colors. Um, and then again, it started out like this. So we took something that was colored and changed it to something that um, is, is kind of in the same color family, but a little different. We've made it a little bit, added a little bit of a rustic tinge to it so that's that's how we change that okay so that's a good thing you can do with this let that dry and it will dry really quick okay so let's say you get and i get a lot of this lace like this um and this is just the you know rolls of the synthetic not real expensive lace and like I said, I used to try and get it in the off-white, and it sometimes it looked good, sometimes it didn't. Um, but here's some white, okay? So I use the off-white way more than I use the white. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to go ahead and, I don't know what that is, and get this nice and wet. That's the important thing. You want to make sure it's saturated with alcohol first. Wipe it all up, okay? Move it around in your hands. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, latte uh, alcohol ink. Do it on both sides. Wipe it all up. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it around in my hands. And that's the important thing is making sure you get it all saturated and different laces will take the color differently so depending upon um, your lace every one of them I mean that you may be using the same color and it just turns out a little bit different okay so this is not turning out as dark as I want it so I'll probably put a little bit more on there. It has kind of a, a little bit more of a peachy tone. There's a piece of hair in there, my hair. And I'll put that in there. All right. So now that turned out a lot closer to what I wanted. So that is more of a beige tone for me. And it went, it started out as white, you know, just a normal white. Here's the other piece just like it, if I can pull it out of there. So it, it started out as this and it turned into this. And you know, that way you have, um, you know, a different, uh, a different color. I'm going to try this one. I think that may have had some pink left on here because it looks a little peachy. I'll wipe that off really good. Get my hands good. Because if you have color left on your hands when you're doing this, what will happen is, of course, that will change the color too. I'm also going to need to make some more of my brown here. So you can watch me do that. I have a little funnel, but I'm not going to use it. Oop, making a mess. Because I have to get alcohol on here anyway, so I figured if it spilled a little bit, I can use it for that. Right? Okay, so I probably take, oh, I don't even remember how many drops. I just do it till it looks the color that I think it needs. 
so and I like I said I use this stuff all the time um, when I'm um, making journals and things like that just because of the fact that it just um, it's instant um, vintaging things if you don't want to have to do a whole bunch of coffee dyeing or something at once okay so I'm gonna put this on here we shook it up put it on both sides and this is the color that I made it which is basically the color of what coffee would be so I think um, and you can make it as dark as you want now see that color didn't turn out quite as peach so that means that probably there was still some peach uh, pink left on my hands when I was rolling it around I think I did the mat good but I didn't do my hands but that's okay because I will probably use that yeah this turned out a little bit more beige see here's the other one but that's okay because I'll still use this but see this turned out more beige and obviously I will use that so that that worked out okay I very rarely do I ever do some that I don't like it or I can't I can't change it because like I said you can mix colors on these so now I have this beige which is great so I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off wipe off my hands and I'm gonna just show you a couple of pieces of cotton uh, uh, and I do try and keep my mat clean because it does stain your mat so I'll just put that on there a little bit that way it'll kind of come off um, so those were synthetic uh, different uh, pieces I'm going to show you most of my cotton pieces are uh, I would say pretty uh, beige for the most part. Let me see if I can find some more white that I can show you. Here's another piece of white. So here's a cut. This is a vintage lace, and then this one is just a newer one. And I'm going to cut off a couple of pieces of that, or maybe I'll just uh, let me just do a smaller piece. And if it's cotton, it's going to take to the fabric more, or if it has a, uh, let me do that. Let me see if I can find another one. Now, I don't know if these are 100% cotton, but... Um, it's more cotton than not anyway I'm going to show you these so how we're going to do these so here we go I'm going to go ahead and get these nice and wet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these I'm going to do it with my coffee dye a little bit more beige now each piece is going to take it differently um, I think this is going to need a little bit more, so. And if you can see, probably needs to go a little bit more. This one turned out, it went from white to um, kind of an off-white. And it took it just fine. This is a, the vintage piece and this one was vintage too so um, and then here's this one this one probably needs a little bit more color on it I think because it started to dry wipe that up a little bit I'll do these two together yeah okay so so this one turned out beige also and then here's another one. So you've got these three pieces that turned out just, just fine. They did the same thing as the other ones did. So I'm gonna let those dry. Okay, so 
the only other thing let me show you if you have some of this um, uh, cotton that's like a, a kind of an off-white color and let's say you want to make it a color because I tend to use a lot of that. Now that I'll buy in the off-white because usually that color is just a kind of a, a natural thread. It's just a bleach thread and it doesn't turn out these weird colors. Okay, so on this one, let's just say I wanted to make that, uh, let's just say I want to make it pink. So I'm going to go this. It's kind of a maroony pink color. Maybe take this color pink. A little bit of that, not too much. Okay, mix it all up. Let's see what we get. Now, see, it takes the color a little bit different than the um, uh, synthetic. It absorbs it a little bit more. So I think I actually want a little bit more pink on there. I'm going to have to take that. Alright, so that turned out a little bit more pink. After that, kind of a maroonish color. And I think I want to make it just a little bit antique -y, so I'm going to put that in there. Alright. So there you go. I mean, we basically took that piece that was white. Let me cut another, let's show you another piece of what it looked like. And you took that piece and this piece, they're basically the same, and you change the color. So, you know, depending upon, you know, what you need, um, you can certainly dye all your lace to whatever colors that you want to do. So, Let's just do a kind of a recap of what we did. And you can see all the different colors that we've created. So we've got that. Um, got our blue. Got our purple. I see we've got a little, little couple of spots right there that it didn't get mixed real well, so you have a little bit of pink, but that's okay. We can fix that. And here's your pink that we kind of toned down. I made it a little bit um, more. Um, see, now this has a couple of spots of pink on it, and that's only because I laid this on top of that, so that's probably what happened. And I think that's probably what happened with that too. I had them all sitting too close together. You want to do make sure you separate them out. Um, we made our other pink here. We made our beige. Let's move these all down. Yeah, you want to make sure you keep these separate while they're drying. Got our peach color. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's what we did. Um, you can uh, easily change the color of your lace to do what you uh, get it the color that you want and um, you know like I said I've gotten to where I don't buy any colored lace anymore because a lot of times I don't like the color when I get it and I'd rather just start with white and get it to where I want and I will show you um, how to make my homemade alcohol inks at some point if you want um, of course, you can buy alcohol ink in different colors and use that also. I just did these because it was it was cheap. I bought um, a bunch of these little containers off of Amazon. I still have quite a few and um, just cheap. I don't buy use the expensive markers. And the other thing too is any of my other uh, permanent markers that I have that have supposedly gone dry those are really good to use for this too so i'll have a video sometime on how to do that anyway i hope you like this and if you haven't heard on my channel 
I do have giveaway Fridays. Um, if you're a subscriber and you watch a video during the week, um, that would be Friday through Thursday and make a comment, then you're entered. Um, it is my giveaways are, you know, uh, anywhere from journals to destashing or whatever. And I do it every Friday. Um, there are videos out there showing, uh, my giveaways. And so if you would like to be entered, all you have to do is watch a video during the current week and comment. And each time you comment on a video, one per video, you're entered. So if you watch five videos and do five comments, you'll be in five times. And um, I pull the names on Friday. And if you contact me by, my, by that Thursday, I'll mail it out to you. I pay up to $10 in shipping after that if you want to pay the difference, you know, I'll certainly uh, mail it to you. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope everybody's having some time to craft and um, relax and get your mind off things and de-stress. And um, to all my subscribers, hang in there, guys. Um, we're going to get through this and hopefully in the end we'll have a whole lot of crafting done. Okay, take care.